Hello and welcome to the Aviation Health and Wellness Show, I think, this afternoon. Uh, a little fantasy air show, I thought, this afternoon to keep us entertained. A couple of hours of, um, yeah, dipping into uh, the Planes TV archive. Um, it's good to be back. Um, if you're new around here, my name's Ian Campbell, I run Planes TV. In a normal year, we'd be uh, chasing around the air show circuit around Europe uh, and further afield sometimes. Haven't been to an air show for a long while, but last year I was doing lots of live streams like this, going through our archive of aviation action. And uh, yeah, as I say, it's really good to be back. Fantastic to see so many of you in the chat. Th hello, Michael, Andy, and Ryan over on YouTube. Haven't seen anyone pop up on Facebook yet, but I'm assuming Facebook's working. Um, let me know if not. I thought I'd theme this one around the idea of pairs displays. And now it's a fairly, actually I've, fairly, I've kept fairly strictly to the idea of two aeroplanes in the sky together. And um, it's quite interesting actually. I sent an email out to our, my newsletter, email newsletter yesterday saying, you know, this is the plan for today. And uh, do you have any suggestions? And I, I already had a list together, but actually, you know, the hive mind of people coming back with replies as, uh, Mentors up till two o'clock this morning, bringing in all sorts of bits and pieces from over the years. So thank you very much for your input, those that replied. I've replied to one or two of you, but that's all I've managed. I've been focusing on getting the show together. Triple check, we're all okay. Looks good. I've I, what I've done in the past with these is uh, tended to focus on our re really old stuff first. Um, oh, I should also say. For those of you who are used to watching these, I'm, it's a different environment. I'm at home, and um, so I've got a setup now at home, which means uh, about six feet away from me through the floor, I've got a four-year-old and a three-year-old watching the TV, watching this. So if you hear some squeaking in the background, that's what that's about. And if the internet drops out, that's because they've switched over to Disney+. Plus. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I tended to start these broadcasts with a dip right back into our archive, which goes back 30 years. Um, so Adrian, who's over in the chat on YouTube, I can see, uh, will have shot this back in the early 90s. And uh, this is 92. This is Lake and Heath, a pair's display from that show. It looks like I'm getting a warning here. Daddy. Oh, hello, Bo, are you coming to join in? I'll tell you what, I'm going to put some uh, Mirage 3s on, whilst I'll de I deal with my intruder. <laughs>
I thought that would be a nice place to begin. Uh, as part of the reason I've, I've themed this a Pez um, show was I posted a couple of uh, the French Pez displays this week uh, or over the last week or 10 days. And uh, they've went down really well. And I remember watching these displays and of course the Mirage, the Kuto Delta, Ramex Delta in recent times. And they're just sharp displays, aren't they? But that one, I think, sort of illustrating some of the challenges of trying to perform a really tight two ship. You know, the number two, they're working hard early on in, in that uh, display. Um, you may, yeah, there's a, I've just seen a couple of warnings on the, on the stream uh, speed there. If I do cut out a little bit, it will only be for a short time. I've done lots of testing of this and uh, hopefully it shouldn't last. So we're going to have, we're going to have lots of uh, enjoyable two-ship displays. So I talked about the Mirages. Uh, we're going to end the stream with, uh, oh gosh, who was it? Ramex or Kutel? Kutel. It would have been Ramex Delta soon. Um, but I thought a bit more French uh, early 90s action here. As I say, shot by Adrian, who's in the chat on YouTube. So if you want to chat old air shows, join the chat over on YouTube and he'll be able to enlighten us uh, as to some of the challenges of recording these shows uh, back uh, 30 years ago. And as I say, all of this content, very many of the emails I had were giving examples, very good examples of two ship displays from sort of 60s and 70s and things. And wouldn't it be nice to have those in our archive? But we are focusing on stuff that's in the Planes TV archive that we've shot over the years, um, partly because that's what I have available. But uh, yeah, I just 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 feels right. And uh, I don't necessarily have the, uh, the OK to broadcast other people's stuff. So here we go. A bit more French action, this time from Valley. And I posted a clip of this. Uh, where are we? Mirage F1s. Posted a short amount of this on social media earlier, but let's take a look at uh, the full section from the Valley 93 show. So Mirage F1 is another of the successful French Mirage family. And over 500 were supplied to the French Air Force. Mirage F1 has been in service with the French Air Force for many years now. And uh, really good performance. This close formation display is the speciality of the French, although sight of an F1 in the UK is rare. So some great French action there. I've been joined by a, a little helper here. They're insisting on joining in and being part of the show. So why not? Why not? A um, bit more French action to come in a moment. Couteau Delta. And this um, section is going to be quite long, 10 minutes. And 
forming part of the show, which is going to last for about two hours, I should have warned you. Um, that's the plan anyway. Kuto Delta. So this is a, a, a section from our special edition or collector's edition from the React 2017 show. Um, it's We like to include lots of in-cockpit longer in cockpit sequences uh, on that on special features there so this is them this is the in cockpit version of that it's a bit difficult because you can't put the full display on so we've had to edit so you kind of lose context a little bit as you go through the routine but we bring in a little bit of the ground to air camera it's hopefully given us a sense of what's going on what the guys are up to along with the narration guiding us through it as well it's about 10 minutes long and thank you big thank you to michael for the super chat over on uh, our youtube and for your suggestion of the apache duo which will come up later and john over on facebook i see you've joined and has requested that we show the extra 300 with the model extra flying formation aerobatic routine which was just stunning and we will be including that actually from shoreham rather than dunsfold um uh, towards the end of the show so yeah lots of variety in this one a fantasy show and it's I've selected but I've taken people's suggestions as well that came through on email and um, we'll have matadors I'm gonna do the Sukhoi and the oh, he's finished um, Sukhoi which is my preference and the uh, XA41 and we'll also have stuff from Zukovsky Moscow uh, Black Cat, Swip Team towards the end, and OFMC Spitfire and Mustang Display, Paul Bonneman, and um, Jonesy uh, uh, displaying at Duxford. It's just superb uh, Warbird display there. But for ten, 10 minutes or so, or nine and a half minutes, Kuto's Elta, this is the in cockpit sequence from Riat 2017. Oh, it will be. I'll join the chat instead of. Uh, And there goes the leader taking off right before your eyes. Begin the display coming from the right, performing an English flyby. Ladies and gentlemen, the Culture Delta. facilitating airspace management for air traffic controllers. The landing speed for a Mirage 2000 is 300 kilometers per hour, and it needs about 1,500 meters to stop. Making ready for a maneuver we call Lazy 8 in column formation, where the pilots are just a few meters from each other and fly under three Gs. The Mirage 2000 can take up to nine positive Gs. In these phases, the crews weight nine times their normal weight due to centrifugal force. Positive Gs make the blood front downwards. The brain is not irrigated and the crew risk passing out. That's what we call black ink. To resist 
such G-Force fractures, pilots and weapons officers wear, wear a G-suit and having to maintain an excellent physical fitness. They also in enemy territory, the fighter flies extremely low to avoid detection by enemy radar. Are trained to fly 50 meters above ground at 900 kilometers per hour. You will now witness a pop-up attack. The pilot pulls up to allow the weapons officer to visually acquire the target with the camera located under the plane. As soon as the weapons officer sees the objective, the pilot will roll and dive towards it. He will then level the plane, delivering the bombs that will be guided by the laser operated by the weapons officer camera. When air supremacy is possessed, Mirage dozen Ds fly at high or medium altitude, especially for close air support mission. The weapons officer is in direct radio communication with troops on the ground, while being ready to open fire on approaching enemy. There, the target has been spotted as the leader is diving. The pilot will fire his weapons, and the weapons officer will designate the objective with the aid of his camera and laser. There on your left, ladies and gentlemen, the Kucho Delta. Our two Mirage to dozen Ds are now getting in position for a spiral pass, meaning in a continuous in close formation. If there is a problem, the jet fighters are equipped with bailout seats that launch the crew at 18 Gs, which is close to the limit that human body can endure. The Mirage 2000 can fly up to an altitude of 15 kilometers and over one and a half times the speed of sounds, meaning 1,600 kilometers per hour. Imagine getting from Plymouth to Edinburgh in 26 minutes. On our left. They are arriving for low pass, nearly at the speed of sound, at just 50 meters above ground level, followed by a 6G survival break. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kucho Delta. Delta. A pilot or weapons officer needs many years of training to be qualified enough to go on a real war mission. Basic military training, parachute jumps, English training, theoretical and in-flight training, no less than five full years of training are needed to become fully mission capable. Team spirit, cohesion, discipline, Rigor and adaptability are the main qualities of a fighter pilot or weapons officer.
Ladies and gentlemen, the display is coming out to an end. Our Mirage 2000 will now pass in front of you one last time to perform a separation before your eyes. Thank you very much, Marchi, and what a fantastic display by the Couteau Delta, their first at a UK show. The Mirage 2000, the 2000, has always been a fantastic display aeroplane, right from the early days with the single-seat 2000C uh, fighter and 2000B conversion trainer. The first in-service display of the Mirage 2000 at the British Air Show took place 30 years ago this year with that tremendous demonstration pilot Claude Saget at the controls at the Milden Hall Air Fate. We enjoyed many years of the Solo 2000 displays. We enjoyed Ramex Delta here, now disbanded for the past two years with the 2000N nuclear strike variant. Kuto Delta, worthy successors with the two 2000Ds, not least the fantastic desert camouflage example completing its landing role now. And of course, over the weekend, you'll be able to see not just Kuto Delta, but also the Rafale solo display from the French Air Force, if you have tickets for the weekend, of course. When those just just superb in cockpit views, in cockpit cameras have come on a long way over the years and the clarity of those images on the beautiful day at Riet in 2017 there, that that low pass at the end, the low fast pass shooting over the uh, the Reds and the other aircraft on the north side. Um, yeah, very dramatic stuff and I hope you enjoyed it. Looks like Andy did, Andy Bird, thank you so much for your uh, super chat over on YouTube. Um, every little helps and big contributions like that mean an awful lot to us and it's wonderful frankly it's wonderful just to see your name popping in the chat uh, every time we do a live stream it's great to know people are coming back for these and you're enjoying them and thanks also to Norman for your contribution as well if you do have requests I can probably figure out a way of um, finding it if I haven't already got it in the list so do feel free in the chat both on Facebook and YouTube to, to make suggestions on pairs of displays you'd like to see if you haven't already I think I've had emails from uh, from both you chaps anyway, so uh, they're, they're probably already in the list, we'll see. Um, I saw another little drop out on the internet, if I do if I do lose you, it will only be for a moment, do stick around. So, we've focused very much on military, focused on French display so far. Um, this is gonna be, as I say, a fantasy show. I'm display director, this is not a CAA sanctioned event. Uh, I've got no uh, committee to, um, beyond you guys and your emails, I suppose, I've got no one else to, uh, to help select and uh, define what the show is. So I'm going to, you know, bounce around from different kind of genres and from one extreme to the other now, from Kuto, Kuto Delta and uh, React in 2017 to a display team we'd normally think of as a two ship, or I do anyway, the, the Wing Walkers. And in this scenario, well, this era, the Breitling Wing Walkers. Um, it's 2021, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And 10 years ago, we did a promo video for the guys, and I can't believe it's 10 years ago. Um, but, and yeah, as I say, normally a four, two ship, but here they were promoting the fact that they were four. So I said I was being strict on bit and just presenting two ships today. I've bent the rules a little bit for this one because I like this video. It's a bit cheesy, uh, but I think, you know, that's what we were aiming for really a bit of fun so hopefully a little bit of light relief from the uh, modern military stuff we will get back in with some tornado gr4s in a minute and then we'll head to the matadors a comparison of their sukhoi uh, the rebel matadors the two ship uh, sukhoi display and then the xa41 we can compare those back to back so stick around for that but now a little video about the brightening wing walkers
so bending the rules slightly on the two ship display but i hope you enjoyed that let's get back to some modern military or fairly modern military sadly gr4 no longer with us but uh tornado duo here from cosford in i think it's 2012 let's have a look that as i said was the first indication that we're going for the more warlike aspects of the show today because next we're going to see the two tornadoes <laughs> Now to talk us through the role demonstration of the two uh, tornadoes, the GR4s, ground attack and reconnaissance, we now have Flight Lieutenant Doug Smith who's going to uh, tell us all about it. The lead aircraft, call sign Poker 1, is being flown today by Flight Lieutenant David Simmons and his navigator is Flight Lieutenant Chris Stradling. The second aircraft, call sign Poker 2, is being flown by squadron leader Bev Thorpe, and in the back seat is Flight Lieutenant Rich Parsons. All are qualified tactics instructors from 15 Squadron at Royal Air Force Lossiemouth, and have all seen recent active service in both Iraq and Afghanistan. After this final attack, the ground commander declares the target area clear, confirms that there is no longer an imminent threat to life, and advises the crew that all attacks have been successful. The patrol can now move forward to the next objective, while Poker 1 and 2 rejoin and depart the target area en route to the next operating area, or to rendezvous with a tanker aircraft in preparation for further support missions. Epic stuff, much missed. I love the uh, pyros accompanying those guys. You know, really captured your attention at, at, at a show. Lots of noise, lots of explosions. Fantastic stuff. And I quite agree with Andy about the wing walkers. What's better than two wing walkers? Four wing walkers. Quite right. And uh, the guys over on Facebook chatting about the weather. Don't worry about the weather outside, guys. You're at a fantasy air show here. It's sunshine all day long, or at least for the next hour and a half anyway. Don't you worry. Pretty damp down here in the southwest too, though. And uh, Michael's saying, have we got the trig team? We do, and they were on the list, and I included right at the top of the show a bit of um, the in-cockpit camera there. I haven't actually got them on the list, though. Um, just, you know, just uh, ran out of... Uh, well, I'll tell you what happened. I was aiming for 18 display acts, which puts you in the about £2,000 bracket with the CAA, I think. I thought, <laughs> thought that would be about as much as we could push, push to as a fantasy air show. Um, so that's what I was aiming for, and frankly, two hours seems like uh, long enough. More um, aerobatic displays now, um, so civilian aerobatic displays. Um, the Matadors, the Red Bull Matadors, two ship, Paul Bonham and, uh, I keep forgetting his name. Someone help me out in the chat. Um, Jonesy, oh, it'll come to me in a minute. Um, displayed with the Sukhoi for many years and then the XA-41. For me, the Sukhoi just had that uh, impact. 
uh, that I yeah I don't know I, I, I liked them uh, with the Sukhois I'm going to play them both back to back we'll take Sukhois from Dunswold in 20 gosh it's going to be like 2012 or 11 or something like that and then Sunderland around about 2013 I think let's take a look back to back we'll have a little vote shall we on which we prefer keep joining the chat and then my keyboard shortcuts don't work I'm using a new setup here I haven't dragged the whole outside broadcast uh, setup from the office so I'm uh, on a PC and it's a little bit of a test this on uh, shortcuts and things. Let's join the Matador. The Red Bull Matadors gave an excellent display. Flying a pair of Sukhoi SU-26s are Paul Bonhomme in the lead and Steve Jones as wingman. The in-cockpit views on this display are amazing. Paul Bonhomme is the current Red Bull Air Racing Champion and Steve Jones was the UK Freestyle Champion in 1995 and overall British Aerobatic Champion in 1996 and both now fly for British Airways as a day job. The Sukhoi is powered by a 400 horsepower M14 radial engine and is very lightweight so it has incredible performance. Like many Soviet aircraft designed before the wall came down, it was designed without regard for expense, and so the solid titanium undercarriage legs cost more than some light aircraft. Line abreast flying is one of the hardest formations, and doing it inverted and in gusty conditions made it even harder still. This is a masterclass of formation flying. Just look how close that wingtip is and the other guy's upside down. So I've already declared my preference for the Sukhoi, but uh, we'll put the XA41 version of that same display on next. It's just there's in cockpit views, you know, um, Bonham's undercarriage leg looks like it's part of Steve Jones. Thank you for those of you reminding me of his name. Steve Jones's aircraft, it looks like that undercarriage leg is part of his aircraft. He's absolutely locked on. Love it. And the Sukhoi, I just find it a, just a really impressive air show aircraft. Let's take a look at the XA41 though. The one thing I will say about this aircraft is the smoke system, something else. Let's take a look. The next item is the Matadors. If you think you've seen close formation aerobatics, this will take your breath away. Paul Bonham, Steve Jones in their Extreme Air XA41 aircraft with 
plenty of smoke. Just how close are those two aircraft? Look at that. Difficult enough to do when flying straight and level, let alone when flying aerobatics like that. Steve, the number two there, almost glued to Paul Bonham, the leader. And uh, what a striking picture that makes. Great colour scheme against that blue and white sky backdrop. Both these guys hugely experienced. Team leader Paul Bonham was the Red Bull Air Race champion for, I think it was 2009 and 2010. One of the uh, three Brits at the time who were racing, Steve Jones, his wingman, also competed. Steve never won the championship, but won several races. And I remember he had a close brush with the ground at uh, one of the US air races out in Arizona, uh, losing uh, the fairing on his undercarriage, so low, so close to the ground was he. And then the other one, Nigel Lamb, of course, who also flies the old flying machine Spitfire, MH434. So now, watch at the top of this manoeuvre. At the top, the rudder goes in and the aircraft just flies sideways. So close to each other. That really is the Matador's signature manoeuvre. Absolutely fantastic. Now spacing out, pulling up as they climb vertically. And watch at the top, hanging almost motionless before doing a tail slide and then hammer heading back down through the smoke trails towards the sea below. A maximum speed of 210 knots, that's about 230 miles an hour. Back in formation now, in line astern and inverted. Look at that, we're looking into the cockpits there. That's very uncomfortable for the pilots, about minus three, minus four G. And uh, unlike the fast jet pilots, they don't have a G-suit, so they can only withstand the G-forces by tensing their muscles, which does become very tiring after a while. So you need to be match fit, as it were, to perform an aerobatic display. Smoke going on now. And I wonder what manoeuvre they're going to be flying here. Have a guess. Now that is a good heart, isn't it? And it deserves a round of applause, I think. Maybe not as big as the Red Arrow's heart and no third aircraft to pierce an arrow through it, but there we go. Now, centre stage is Steve Jones, who's... Oh, look at that. There we are. They've got... They must have heard me. <laughs> you don't need a third aircraft to perform the put the arrow through the heart. There we are. So that's Paul flying the arrow and Steve Jones flying his solo aerobatics. They're uh, a manoeuvre known as a Lomshevac, which is the Czechoslovakian word for a drunken man because that's what it feels like performing that manoeuvre. Then rolling rapidly. Now no more forward motion, but the aircraft is still rolling, a manoeuvre known as a torque roll, using the torque of that engine and propeller to keep the aircraft rolling when there's no forward speed before tumbling out of the bottom of the manoeuvre and out of the smoke. Performing aerobatic -like manoeuvres like these in such close proximity needs great skill in the pilot, immense trust between the two pilots, and that in itself is born out of many hours of practice together. Coming up now for the break, there they go. And uh, exiting to the left, Steve Lowe going fast, Paul high to the left, rolling slowly away. That was the Matadors. What a superb display. A class act indeed. I quite agree, Andy. Wonderful display. Let me know in the chat which one you prefer, the Sukhoi or the XA41. Wasn't Sunderland, isn't Sunderland a wonderful venue on a bright day like that? Just the, the way those aircraft 
pop in the in the uh, in the blue sky. Wonderful venue when uh, when you get the weather. Didn't always, didn't always get the weather. We don't always get the weather everywhere, do we? But uh, had appalling weekends in Sunderland with sea fret and the likes. Anyway, if you're just joining us, welcome. It's good to see so many of you with us. My name's Ian. I run Plains TV. And uh, normally throughout the summer, we're at lots of air shows and I'm hoping we might get to a few this year, fingers crossed. Um, but uh, throughout last year, I was doing lots of these live streams of yeah highlights of previous air shows. So thought today we'd bring together some of our favourite pairs displays. So we're about, where are we? Probably about halfway through, are we nearly? And uh, lots more to come. In a little while we'll show uh, Spitfire and Typhoon pairing, which is always nice. For, see it fairly rarely, and we'll take that from 2014 from Duxford. Um, so both aircraft in D-Day um, schemes, which I thought was quite nice. We'll have a few Russian aeroplanes after that. Uh, I'll say no more, and we'll we'll get some helicopter action in a little while as well with the Black Cats, another in cockpit display with a bit of in, um, proper in cockpit stuff, so control inputs and things, seeing how hard pilots are working during that routine of uh, the two Lynx helicopters as they were, uh, and then we'll go on later on. We'll see actually um, Paul and Steve again flying the Spitfire and Mustang, the OFMC Spitfire and Mustang at Duxford for another really nice tight formation display uh, later on and we'll get through to the end lots more in between but through towards the end we'll finish with Ramex Delta and um, all of this material is taken from our back catalog uh, which is always available to view at watch.planestv.com that's our paid subscription service which you're very welcome to join it helps us out a lot and as many of you have found out you can also leave us a super chat over on YouTube and stars over on Facebook as well which uh, contribute to uh, keeping the lights on so thank you to those of you who've uh, Dug, uh, dug into your pockets. Right, let's go to Duxford, shall we? 2014, I believe, for Spitfire and Typhoon, and we'll get a bit of the Typhoon solo, again, bending the rules on pairs displays, but we start off with the Spitfire and Typhoon in formation, another really bright day, and both aircraft looking resplendent in their D-Day schemes. We're about to witness a combination of old and new. The RAF's Eurofighter Typhoon display pilot for this season, Flight Lieutenant Noel Rees, has devised a short routine in concert with the Battle of Britain Memorial flight that sees Typhoon joining Spitfire in commemoration of the events of the D-Day period. Thus, from our left, Spitfire and Typhoon. Now, we're about to see something of the capabilities of number 29 Reserve Squadron's Eurofighter Typhoon here to talk you through the display manager for 2014, Flight Lieutenant Andy De Geer. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. My name is Flight Lieutenant Andy De Geer, and on behalf of the whole Typhoon display team, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce Flight Lieutenant Noel Rees, and the 2014 Typhoon display. Notice the striking D-Day invasion stripe scheme on this year's Typhoon and that is new for this year and this year only. This represents the modern Eurofighter Typhoon forces acknowledgement of the incredible sacrifices made by the older Hawker Typhoon force 70 years ago. Now, 
Now, Noel and the whole 2014 Typhoon display are from 29 Reserve Squadron based at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire. 29 Squadron is the Typhoon Operational Conversion Unit. This squadron trains all the pilots and mechanics who will later go on to the frontline units and fly and maintain this glorious aircraft. Noel coming round once more for his final pass where he'll be departing vertically up to 8,000 feet in six seconds. So hopefully you don't mind me sneaking in a solo display in this Pairs Fantasy Air Show, Robert and Legendary chatting over on YouTube about the smoke from the tail. I believe that's fuel uh, coming out the tail in various attitudes and, and whatever. Not terribly helpful, you know, when you're dogfighting, I wouldn't have thought to leave a vapor trail like that, but there we go. Um, what have we got coming up next? Someone called it, yes, the Sukhois, SU-27s from the early 90s, one of the all-time greatest air show Pairs displays, I think. And as I say, this one from Woodford in 1993. I apologise, that is not <laughs> that is not the video I wanted to play. Let's get that going. There we go, the mermaid on the tail end of this. Making a very welcome return to Woodford are the fabulous Russian test pilots from the Gromov Flight Research Center at Zhukovsky, south of Moscow. Led by Anatoly Kovotchur, the team fly civilianized versions of the Su-27 flanker aircraft and are sponsored by the Moscow-based Jupiter Insurance Company. Although the bad weather prevented the full display, which would have included the Cobra and the tail slide, what the test pilots were able to do was probably even more impressive.
a sneaky uh, shot of the Patrice Swiss in the Hunters there. Ryan, I think you summed that uh, Sukhoi display up very well on your know, comment on YouTube. Wow, that was low. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, I love watching these early 90s uh, shows and uh, we're gradually getting it all onto the on-demand service. I've literally got stacks of tapes, which uh, Adrian, my father, who shot all this early stuff, uh, produced. And your camera that you're watching me on is actually sat on a big professional SVHS deck, which um, currently isn't outputting two audio channels, so I can't use it to capture stuff at the moment. But that's our priority during the winter, is get a lot of this stuff, which literally is still sat on the SVHS tapes. We've released them on DVD, but we're going back to the original tapes for the best possible quality. And it is good quality. It's falling over. Um, it's great stuff, SVHS. I mean, it's very, very watchable. Long lens, shot well, very entertaining. And I'm looking forward to bringing more of it to you. More Russian action now. So back in 2012, Adrian and uh, colleague Ben headed off to Zukovsky for the Russian Air Force's 100th anniversary. And this pairing stuck out to me, MiG-29 M2 in the Pack fa the forerunner to the Su-56, for that one. Um, an enjoyable little little pairs routine and both very interesting aeroplanes to see so I thought I'd include them here let's take a look the original improvement of the MiG-29 was called the MiG-33 with the NATO name Fulcrum E but reverted to MiG-29M and is sometimes called the Super Fulcrum just to add more confusion, there is now a MiG-35 with improved electronics and weapons system. In an attempt to build on its strengths as a short-range subsonic visual dogfighter, its multi-role capability has been improved with enhanced use of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground high-precision weapons. Its internal fuel capacity has also increased, permitting a considerable increased combat range. The M model now has four-fold redundant fly-by-wire and a better pilot-to-aircraft interface. With airframe changes, this is effectively a new aircraft. So, has the brief for multifunctionality, manoeuvrability, low visibility and supersonic crews been met in the PAK FA? Whether or not it will deliver is much in debate in the new open Russia, but if there is one thing that history has taught us about Russian aviation development, it has been clear in this programme. It is that there is something in the Russian psyche that drives them to overcome setbacks the decimation of the officer corps in the 1930s, the near destruction of their air force and aircraft manufacturing industry in 1941, the unsuitability of western lend-lease airframes in the Russian winter, the successful application of unsuitable and obsolete airframes to the demands of war, the aerodynamic can of worms of the original MiG-1 and Su-27, the economic and identity crisis that followed the breakup of the Soviet Union. No one can deny the Russian desire for national strength. They suffered terribly in the Great Patriotic War with approaching 25 million dead, more than half of them civilians. And this is the aircraft that will front that strength for the foreseeable future. One of the most remarkable things about the project to date is the relatively low cost of $10 billion, and it's still on schedule. Fantastic to include some uh, Russian hardware in this stream. A couple of nice uh, pairs displays. And we've got a bit of solo action, but we're, we're bending the rules a little bit. And thanks again to Nigel watching on Facebook for the suggestion of the SU-27s from the 90s there. They weren't on my list. And I saw your email last night. I thought, oh, gotta do it, gotta do it. How could I not include them? A little bit more in cockpit action now. Uh, we'll go with some classic jets first, and then we'll head for Black Cats, a bit of helicopter displays, uh, followed by the Apache 2 ship. Uh, AAC Apache Army Air Corps 
And then we'll get a bit more um, Warbirdy action. We'll head to Duxford for Gladiator and Fury pairing. And then OFMC Spitfire and Mustang coming up as well. Really nice two ship again by the, uh, the Matador guys and pilots. Okay, Vampire in Cockpit. It's a little bit of a long sequence again, and hopefully you get the sort of continuity of the display, sort of understand the routine. It's really hard to compress a full display routine in an understandable way when you're just using the onboard views, but I do like to do the longer sequences just from onboard views, because, you know, it's an interesting perspective that, of course, we don't get when we're all sat watching an air show. Hope you enjoyed this. This is the Vampires at Duxford in the mid-2012, 13-ish, something like that. <laughs> Someone can tell me the date in a minute. Enjoy.
really nice sequence that and this probably makes me a massive nerd but I really enjoy hearing hearing the sound from the number two there the the fine adjustments in throttle to keep position and um, yeah I find it an enjoyable watch and there'll be a little bit more of that but from a helicopter perspective next some in cockpit views now from the Black Cats display um, displaying at Yeovilton sort of home show uh, again from a similar era to that uh, vampires material um, let's get straight in with it shall we this is the Black Cats at uh, Royal Naval Air Station near Ableton for their air day back in god let me tell you the year this is 2011 so going back 10 years into the archive it's about the last time I remember putting cameras in the, the links or even Wildcat. I don't think we've done Wildcat, but the guys, and I should say actually a big thank you to um, the Nor Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron for that. those onboard views. They're really nice views throughout that display routine. And uh, the same thanks to the Black Cats back in 2011 for what you're about to watch now.
Andy, you've summed it up for me nicely as well. Again, uh, those guys making pairs, helicopter, close formation work look uh, a lot easier than it presumably is. I've mean, yeah, not spent any time at the uh, control column of a, a helicopter, but uh, yeah, making it look very tidy there. Clearly a couple of pros in action, or, or four of them, I should say. More helicopter two ship action now. This was a suggestion from Michael. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everyone else for replying to my email newsletter yesterday. By the way, if you don't get my email newsletters, I tend to send them once a week. Haven't done through, uh, through the Christmas and early January period, but picking that back up again now. You'll find a link in the description of this video to that you can hit and uh, yeah, keep up to date with live streams like this that we're doing, but also hopefully when we get out and about to some real shows, some, uh, some live real air shows as well, uh, and new releases and special offers and all the rest. Is that Cy Wilson on YouTube? Is that the Cy Wilson? Say hello if it's uh, you. Um, Apache Duo then, Army Air Corps, and Michael's uh, suggestion, and thanks again, Michael, for that. Let's take a look. No in cockpit views this time, just from the ground, but uh, enjoyable nonetheless. Good afternoon, sirs, moms, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. A warm welcome to the 2015 Attack Helicopter Display. During the routine, I'll take the opportunity to talk to you about the full array of weapons available to the crew whilst the aircraft fly right to the edge of the limits in pitch, roll and G. For the first manoeuvre, each aircraft will fly a 270 degree wing over. This pitches the aircraft 60 degrees nose up and uses up to 90 degrees angle of bank to fly around the turn. The display pair today are using call sign gunship. The pair have now entered a formation known as the wheel. This enables constant observation onto a target, with each aircraft looking at different aspects at all times. The Apache's 30mm cannon can fire up to 90 degrees off the direction of flight, allowing near continuous engagement from the pair. This formation was used extensively on operations in Afghanistan. Gunship 1 is, flying, uh, is being flown today by Captain Jim Trahern and Sergeant Henry Luck. Gunship 2 is on the left and is being flown by Warrant Officers Jamie Bokes and Adam Nash. Captain Jim Trahern and Warrant Officer Bokes have both deployed on four operational tours and have each spent nearly two years deployed there. Warrant Officer Nash and Sergeant Luck both have two tours and nearly a year in Afghanistan. Gunship 1, high on the far left, is now positioning for a simulated diving fire rocket attack. In addition to its contribution to operations in Afghanistan, four British Apaches were deployed to the Mediterranean Sea aboard HMS Ocean in 2011. They attacked numerous targets in Libya as part of the UN operation there, proving the Apaches' maritime capability. The Apache pair will now perform a bunt in the centre of the airfield. This manoeuvre this maneuvers 10 tonnes of helicopter all the way through its pitch limits, from 90 degrees nose up to 90 degrees nose down. The British Apache is built in the UK by Augusta Westland. It provides the UK with an expeditionary strike capability ready to deploy at short notice to defend Britain's interests. It has proven itself as a battle winning asset that can strike from both land and sea. Look to your right now as gunship one recovers from the pedal turn and approaches the centre of the airfield to fly a 270 degree wing over. As they level out, Gunship 1 joins him from our left to fly in formation as a patrol. For the final vertical manoeuvre, both aircraft will fly a 360 degree wing over as they approach the centre of the airfield. This truly shows off the agility of the Apache, even loaded at its operational weight. If you've enjoyed today's display, we hope you can make it to one of our tactical displays later this season, supported by our excellent pyrotechnics team. If you'd like to learn more about the Apache or the Army Air Corps, come down and see the Army Air Corps recruiting stand located near the BOAC VC-10 towards the right of the crowd line. As they approach back to the hover, you have Captain Jim Trahern and Sergeant Luck and Gunship 1 to your left and Warrant Officers Bokes and Nash to your right. Please put your hands together for the 2015 Attack Helicopter Display Team.
On behalf of everyone from the Attack Helicopter Force Watcham, we would like to thank our 2015 sponsors, Augusta Westland, Mawson International, Selex ES, Lift West, Marshall of Cambridge, JR Industrial and Magellan Aerospace. Finally, Event Horizon. Finally, we would like to thank you, the public, for your continued support to the British Armed Forces. Thank you. And thank you, Captain Johnny Long, for talking us through a very menacing routine by the two Apaches, our second contribution of the day from Watersham Airfield after the seeking, to which we said farewell earlier on. Good stuff, and we'll stick with Duxford now, but with some Warbird historic aircraft uh, flying. A really interesting pairi pairing here of uh, Fury and Gladi Gladiator, and a nice chat with Guy Black as well about the restoration of the Fury. I thought it was quite interesting. Following that, we'll stick with Duxford again with Spitfire and Mustang before heading to Shoreham for that really interesting pairing of extra 300 with extra 300 radio controlled aircraft, which I just, I mean, I fly radio controlled stuff, but uh, the idea of putting one up with a real airplane is pretty terrifying. So that's quite uh, impressive. We've got that coming up soon. Then we'll have the SWIP team or the Twister Geo as they were, a uh, little, little promo video I did for them about 10 years ago as well. And then we'll get towards the end of the show today. We've got, uh, well, well, we'll end the flying display with Ramex Delta, and there may be one or two uh, extra uh, bits and pieces in between. Let's see. Let's head back to Duxford then for a um, glimpse of the Blenheim, followed by Fury and Gladiator. <laughs> Making its debut on the airshow circuit this weekend, the historic aircraft collection's Hawker Fury. It is led in by the Gloucester Gladiator. The harmony of the Bristol Mercury engine of the Gladiator and the Rolls-Royce Kestrel 2S on the Fury. This not only the world's sole airworthy Hawker Fury, but the world's sole Hawker Fury. Old man who told us about it was a little bit vague about where it was, but eventually I hired an aeroplane and just scouted around bigger radius as possible, and eventually found the farm that it was on, along with quite a number of other airframes from the wartime period. Um, so, having gone there, identified straight away the remains of the Fury, quite right. And it was really the, the framework only, with wings missing and a few other things missing, but very clearly a Fury. Having got back to England, we then spent the first five years researching it because there was almost no information surviving on the Fury. About a thousand drawings came up of the 10,000 we needed. We found some crucial drawings in America that a model making magazine had acquired from Hawkers. Um, although the owner of the magazine had died, through his widow we managed to track down where they'd gone. As you can see, the two aircraft have split the uh, Furies going behind us to go and hold while the gladiator runs in and we'll leave that display there i remember having a long chat with guy and uh yeah the restoration of these old aircraft is just you know it's another world and it's something i'd love to spend some time talking and recording um in the future uh yeah maybe it'd be nice to make some plans there and uh yeah that interview has just got me thinking maybe we should go dig out the full interview because it's really interesting to hear from guy on the project like that again sticking with duxford now spitfire and mustang paul bonham steve jones just uh you know that they, they seem to know how to fly a two-ship routine it was only fair that they were going to make an appearance or two in this uh show enjoy this well, next up something of a treat a combination of perhaps the two most famous allied fighters of the Second World War. Both of them from one of the Duxford-based operators, the old flying machine company, which has really always set such high standards of display flying.
So look out to the right, running in the P51D Mustang and the Spitfire 9. That's certainly a routine to stir the soul. The Spitfire and the Mustang of the old flying machine company. And a display during which this weekend we also remember a former OFMC pilot who passed away only recently. This was Pete Jarvis who flew for the company for many years, including participating in the making of the Memphis Bell movie 25 years ago. A former Royal Air Force pilot, long time airline captain for British Air Tours amongst others. Pete was an extremely nice fellow who still assisted in aspects of running air shows until recent years and he'll be very sorely missed by his family and his many friends in the air display world. And a nice tribute from Ben there. It's uh, uh, yeah, a wonderful uh, commentator. It's nice to hear the odd uh, uh, yeah, a bit from Ben <laughs> through through this day. He's featured quite a lot, hasn't he? Um, and nice, of course, to hear the Merlins there, everyone on YouTube commenting about the wonderful sound. It's one of the benefits of the camera position over towards the western end there at Duxford. Um, you know, get the mics out into the airfield, just get that wonderful sound. Um, not always tricky, not always easy at air shows. If you're just joining, where have you been for an hour and a half? We're, we're nearly done. We've got another 20 minutes or so of, of the show to go. Coming up next, the Extra 300 with the Model Extra, flying uh, kind of a formation routine. Is it a Model Extra or a Edge something or other? We'll find out in a moment. Um, I've, I did lot, do lots of these streams. Um, do subscribe if you are uh, if you haven't already, either on YouTube or on Facebook. And there's a link in the description to the email newsletter. That's a fantastic way of keeping in touch. It's a two-way thing. Do reply to it and, um, and uh, make your suggestions about what to include. I was slightly overwhelmed by the number of responses I got yesterday to the, to the request for ideas for a two-ship themed 
um, air show. So thank you for all of those and apologies for not getting back to everyone. There's quite a lot of you. Um, I'm doing these streams at the moment from home, which hopefully means I can do them more often. So if you've got ideas and suggestions, do throw them my way. And if you're a subscriber already to the Wrong button. <laughs> to the on-demand service at watch.planestv.com. I'm going to start doing a few regular and sort of more, <laughs> I'm going to say more relaxed and uh, less refined and <laughs> not sure you'd call this a terribly refined live broadcast, but uh, you know, just something more regular where we can keep in touch and maybe watch to watch um, old programs together or even new ones, you know, as I bring them to the service. So yeah, keep in touch via the email newsletter for that. Uh, with this setup, which seems to be working at home. I've done lots of tests and it seems to have held up for the last hour and a half. Um, so yeah, I'm now set up both at the office and at home to give me a bit of flexibility. And at home, I'll get cake deliveries from downstairs, which isn't too bad, is it? Now, back to the flying. Extra 300, this is from Shoreham, the extra f flown by Chris Burkett, with the radio controlled extra information as well, a remarkable pairing. And this is Chris Burkett in the extra, and his partner is Mike Williams. Mike will be flying the smaller extra. The extra designed by a Swiss designer, wonderful Walter Extra put his head together and he thought, this is what we need for an aerobatic aeroplane. And he literally take, took the world by storm, the aerobatic world by storm. His first aircraft was rather conventionally built, but later on, he started making them in composites. It's purely designed for aerobatics. It is a joy to fly. I've done some flying in the two-seat version, and it is an absolute joy to fly. Enormous ailerons and you'll find the Model 1 has even larger ailerons to give it a quite remarkable rolling performance. The rate of roll is probably around 420 degrees a second. In other words, you can do a complete 360 in less than one second. And you've got to know that's coming in advance because you've got to get your head in the right place because the G of a, of a rotation like that will smash your head against the side of the cockpit uh, glass if you're not careful. Chris Burkett lands the the extra. Mike Williams haven't landed the model one. I know it's, that's the first time I've seen that particular display live, and it is very, very impressive. Very, very impressive indeed. So we're, we're delighted with our model flyers. That's superb. 
super routine, isn't it? As Artful says, so unique. Just a, such a unique pairing there. And uh, yeah, it must take an awful lot of work to get it up to a sort of safe level. And really impressive, fantastic spectacle. And uh, looking forward. I hope we get to see that again. Lucas uh, <laughs> describes it as mad. Yeah, quite right. Crazy stuff, but yeah, good fun. So coming towards the end, we've got uh, Swip Team, or the Twister Geo as they were. Swip Team sponsored uh, sponsored by Scottish Widows Investment Partnership for a little while and I did a promo video for them. So we'll play that in a moment. It's quite a fun, energetic piece with uh, both daytime and nighttime display. It's quite fun. And then we we'll progress toward the end. We're going to... F the finale is going to be Ramex Delta. We started off with the French uh, Air Force two ships of Mirage F1 and... Uh, did we have the F1? Yeah, I think so. Kuto Delta as well. And we're going to end it where we started with uh, Romex Delta. It's the one that pops into everyone's mind. You say two ship uh, pairing. Uh, certainly in modern times, they're, they're a big favourite. So we'll finish with them. And there's a couple of other displays we'll sneak in as well. You'll see what those are in a little while. If you're enjoying the show, I keep saying the on demand service is always available. There's a free subscription to that service. And subscribers of that have really helped us through a pretty sticky patch with no air shows, which I rely on to make a living. So thank you to anyone who's watching who is an on-demand subscriber. There's plenty more content, as I say, both from elder VHS tapes, but also the 2011 season, um, which I thought I'd got onto the service in completely. There are a few more to go. Having dug around just yesterday for material for this show, there's more of those that I'll be publishing in the near term. So look forward to those. Let's get stuck on, yeah, stuck on. Let's head back to 20, about 2011 again, I think, to um, the Twisted Duo. As I say, this is a promo video I did for the guys, Pete Wells and Guy Westgate fine with him at that point. And uh, as, uh, as Pete says at the beginning of this, what does he say? Get in, follow me. Get in, just follow me. So Pete Wells, Twisted Duo there from 2013. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, what a wonderful little aeroplane that is. Incredible range on it as well. Quite like one of those in my future fantasy air aircraft hangar. Um, Mr. Father Christmas, please. Um, yeah, really nice display there. And uh, love fantastic opportunity to put that little promo together for the guys back in 2013. So we're heading towards the... Uh, the sort of finale of the show here and I, I really did want to go for for Ramex Delta and um, the obvious choice of material there was React but actually one of the shows that I really enjoy covering each year didn't make it there last year due to the situation but they did manage to put on a bit of a show um, is NATO Days in Ostrava and uh, had a dig around for the Ramex material and suddenly realised that there was not just the Ramex Delta at this show there's a MiG-29 duo from uh, Slovak Air Force and the Su-22s as well and I thought I'd bring them all together as a bit of a finale to this show so we've got those back to back over the next 10 minutes or 12 minutes 
and I'll come back on at the end and we can uh, say a bit of a cheerio. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, if you have, do make sure to like and uh, subscribe and uh, do, do what you need to do on the different platforms. If you really enjoyed it and you'd like to see lots more of it, there's hundreds of hours of content on our on-demand service stretching back right to the early 90s. That's at watch.planestv.com. Bish, bosh, bash. And um, there's a free trial there have a little browse and uh yeah maybe you stick around uh, and help us out through a sticky patch uh, as i say it's a pen- paid on demand service and of course all the there are all of these programs are available on dvd and blu-ray as well if you fancied that but yeah do subscribe join the new email newsletter and uh i'm hoping to get a bit of a routine around uh doing these live broadcasts more often i'll shut up now and show you some more airplanes lots of uh, pairings here starting with the mig 29 and the su-22s and then we're going to finish off with a Ramex Delta. Enjoy. <laughs> When the West inherited MiG-29s, it was shocked at their air-to-air superiority in short-range dogfights. The MiGs won hands down against F-15, F-16 and F-18, despite being manually controlled in combat with fly-by-wire types. The helmet-mounted sight, infrared sighting and tracking system and Archer missiles, which could lock on at 45 degrees off bore sight, were unbeatable. What let it down, they discovered, was the lack of an airborne refuelling capability, reducing combat range, and the radar and navigation systems were well below Western offerings. Modification of these aircraft to integrate with NATO systems started in 2005. This involved navigation and communication systems from Rockwell Collins, an IFF system from BAE Systems and a new glass cockpit. Starting up now with their uniquely sounding Lujulka AL-21 axial flow turbojets are two Sukhoi Su-22 M4 Fitter K from the Polish Air Force. These are swing wing, high speed, low level ground attack and reconnaissance aircraft.
The SU-22 is the export version of the SU-17. The SU-17 was a development of the SU-7, retaining the inner wing and landing gear, but giving the outer wing varial geometry, better known as swing wing, for better takeoff, landing and slow speed performance. It has proved to be a rugged, reliable airframe, easy to maintain and nearly 3,000 have been built. The engine in particular was very tolerant of the harsh conditions when in operational service in Afghanistan and retrofitted flare dispensers proved effective against man-launched anti-aircraft missiles. These M4 versions are the final production version with upgraded avionics for navigation and advanced weapon systems including anti-radiation missiles. Some are planned to remain in service until 2016. This newly formed team is called Ramex Delta from Istrela to Bay in the south of France. They fly a pair of Dassault Mirage 2000N aircraft. Dasso, originally called Bloch, formed in the 1930s and after the disruption of World War II, regrouped, renamed and produced a line of innovative and very successful aircraft, especially fighters. The Mirage 2000 followed the successful Mirage 3 and Mirage F1. It started life as a British-French joint venture for a multi-role combat aircraft, which, when the French decided to go it alone, saw the British team up with the Germans and Italians to produce the Tornado.
Twitter, kromě říct, hledá ženu a muž. Je jedno. Koho? The Mirage 2000N variant was designed for nuclear strike with a standoff missile and replaced the much larger Mirage 4. It has a strengthened airframe for low-level attack, a powerful terrain-following radar, jamming and chaff systems, air-to-air -air missiles for self-defense and is not licensed for export. 75 have been built. Other versions of the Mirage 2000 have been successful as a multi-role fighter. The production run of over 600 aircraft was from worldwide orders from nine countries. A 20 minut na to, že pak můžeme těžit na britskou akrobatickou skupinu Red Arrow. Takže ještě jednou děkujeme francouzskému letectvu za to, že nám tady předvedli. Fab display from Ramex Delta. And actually some really nice conditions at NATO days that year. It's often a bit of a challenge with the sun behind, uh, which way, behind the aircraft. So they often end up as black dots. But the different filming positions that year, just, I don't know, it all just made it, uh, yeah, some really nice material there. Thank you for the invite to Aero India in the chat over on YouTube. Not going to make it this year, sadly. Um, it was on my calendar and I really would like to get out to do an Indian show and maybe even China. So, but, um, yes, not at the moment. Um, just a bit, a little bit too much uncertainty at the moment about um, travel and things. So I, I parked that one for this year. I'm afraid I'd love to get out at some point, and very best of luck to the guys uh, putting on that show in uh, the current circumstances. Um, is it recorded or is it really live? It's really live. <laughs> But obviously these uh, flying displays are uh, recorded. That one from 2012, I believe. Now, uh, on Facebook, I've had a request, and this is the only request I'm going to manage today, unless someone throws in something that's really um, too irresistible. Javier over on Facebook requested the French Jaguars, or, or rather just some Jaguar. And I did happen to have some available um, that I'd sort of posted a little bit of on social media earlier this week and if you're enjoying what you're watching today do of course follow us on uh, on facebook twitter instagram i'm trying to be very active on all of those at the moment whilst uh, keeping on with the edit work and, and stuff and do follow us over there for the little clips like this this is the french jaguar display from lake Ethan 19 1992 raffin mike and this is the full section from that that program lake Ethan 92 which is of course available on our on-demand service let's take a look at those
what a cool display fantastic way to bring the show to a close that is the end ladies and gents a couple of hours of uh, two ship flying displays i hope you enjoyed my selection if i missed any any that you think i really should have included do feel free to let me know on social media you can find me i'm at ian plains tv on on twitter but you can find the main my main plains tv one there as well and of course i, tr- I try and monitor the other ones as well but twitter's the main one really for a bit of to and, to and fro back and forth conversation there is of course the email newsletter you'll find a link in the description if you'd like to keep up to date with future live broadcasts that we're doing yes sir people can hear me i'm good they can hear you too at the moment <laughs> We're all good. I'll come down for some cake in a minute. Right, we're going to make some. We're going to actually, um, but Mummy's going to put all of the icing on all the cakes. Fabulous. And um, we're going to do the um, decorations. Lovely. Look forward to those. Right, I'm going to head off and enjoy some cakes by the sound of it. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll try and do more of these, maybe with a few less inter- interruptions. We'll see. Um, evening shows I think is probably a better bet probably after their bedtime um, if you've got any ideas of themes of shows that you'd like me to do I was quite pleased with this two ship one I quite like the idea of doing a formation team one at some point um, yeah just just let me know email newsletter link in the description I send one out every Friday maybe maybe a few more here and there um, nothing too pushy though it's not spam it's just a bit of a com- two way conversation do feel free to reply to those with any ideas that you have on-demand service. If you've enjoyed what you've watched and like to see more hundreds of hours of uh, our back catalogue stretching back 30 years, you can sign up there for a free trial and watch all of this stuff anytime. It's, uh, yeah, on-demand subscribers have really helped us out in a, in a pretty sticky patch uh, just recently. Thanks again, everybody. Lovely to see all the same names uh, popping into the chat. And uh, I very much look forward to putting together another show. I'll try and do one. You know, I'll try and do something every week, but it's, it's going to be hard to do uh, something where I bring together quite so much material. But I'll try. And uh, yeah, throw suggestions my way, throw encouragement, and that'll uh, encourage me to, to do more of it. Thanks again for joining everybody and thank you for all those contributions in the Super Chat on YouTube. Thank you, James, at the end there. Thank you so much. Every little bit really does help at the moment. Thank you. All right, let me have your suggestions for future live broadcasts and I'll see you at an air show soon. Cheers.